In this video, we're going to go over two topics. The first part, we're going to go over simplifying radicals. And in the second part, we're going to go over um, operations with radicals. So just a review of simplifying from radicals. You should have seen this before. But now, going forward, every time that you are answering a question on a, an assessment, if you have to give your answer exact, you must make sure you are giving the most simplified exact result, which means from now on, you have to make sure all of your expressions have all radicals completely simplified after watching this video. Okay, so first, let's, I like to go through this and when we're simplifying radicals, be mindful of our perfect squares and our perfect cubes. It kind of makes things go along a little bit quicker, not always, but most of the time. Okay, so 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Those are our perfect squares from uh, 1 to 100. Okay, our perfect cubes, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 3 to the 3rd is 27, 4 to the 3rd is 64, 5 to the 3rd is 125, 6 to the 3rd is 216, 7 to the 3rd is 343, 8 to the 3rd is 512, 9 to the 3rd is 729, and 10 to the 3rd is 1000. Now, do you have to do it like this? No, but it helps to remember these values, okay? Remember your prime factor tree back from many, many years ago. That can help you when you are simplifying radicals, okay? So, when you have a completely simplified radical, if you are taking, let's say you have the nth root of x, okay? n is the index of the radical, okay? x is the radicand. In your expression, okay, for your radical, it is completely simplified if you have no factors left of the radicand that can be written as the factor raised to the n power. So, for example, the square root of 8, okay? I could take the square root of 8 and I can write it as 2 squared times 2, okay? So I was able to write one of the factors raised to the second power, right? Which is really the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, okay? And so this needs to be simplified because I was able to write one of the factors as a number raised to the index of a square root is 2. So that needs to be simplified. Now remember our product property of radicals, okay? Let's just go over that now. Our product property of radicals says that if you have um, a times the nth root of x, okay, times b times the nth root of y, that's the same as a, b times the nth root of x, y. So this works both ways, okay? Meaning, if you have a product, the nth root of 8, I can write it as Okay, I can break this up and I can write it as a square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2. Now the square root and the power of 2, when the index is the same as the exponent, they undo each other. That's what leaves you with 2 square root 2. Okay, so we're going to simplify our radicals. Now I'm going to go over the shorter way of doing it and then the longer way of doing it, whichever you feel comfortable with. So if I take the square root of 50 and I need to simplify it, well, if I can, if there's a factor, if this is a square root, if there is a factor 50 that's a perfect square, then I know 100%, okay, I, I need to simplify this. So as long as it's small enough, okay, we might be able to do this by just thinking about perfect squares. Okay, if you have a calculator, you could just go through more of your perfect squares, 11 squared, you know, all the way to 20 squared. But what's a perfect square that's a factor of 50? 25. So 50, the square root of 50 is the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And what's the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is 5, so this simplifies to 5 square root of 2. Does 2 have any factors that are perfect squares? No. Okay, so that means the square root of 2 can't be simplified anymore, so this simplifies to be 5 square root of 2. Now you can do what's called a prime factor tree. So 50 is the same as 2 times 25. I always put the prime factor here. Okay, the smallest prime factor, 52. Now 25, okay, that's what's the smallest, that's 5 times 5. So this is 5 times 5 times 2. And if it's the square root, you want the same factor two times. 
Okay, so this is the same as 5 squared times 2. So if I take the square root of that, that's the square root of 5 to the second times the square root of 2. And the index, okay, the square root, and the power of 2 undo each other, leaving you with 5 square root 2. So remember, you could always do the prime factoring, okay? When you have to take the fourth root, you might want to do that if you don't know values raised to the fourth power. Okay, so that was number one. Number two is negative square root of 48. Okay, so notice the negative is outside. That just means whatever we simplify to, it's negative. We cannot be simplifying the square root of a negative number. It's not real, okay? So if you are coming across a prop, an expression that says simplify this, if it's not real, you could just write that it's not real. You don't have to write in terms of i. So, okay, I'm just going to pick the smallest perfect square that goes into 48, which is 4. So this would be the square root of 4 times the square root of 12. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is now negative 1 times the square root of 4, so this is negative 2 times the square root of 2. But now let's check. Does 12 have any factors that are perfect squares? Yes. That's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So negative 2 times 2, that's going to be negative 4 square root 3. So could you have done this, just taken this and wrote as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3? Sure. But if you just go for the smallest perfect square, just know you need to look back at that one and figure out whether or not it has perfect squares in it itself still. Okay? You might not have picked the, the biggest perfect square. Okay, so you could just always go through and just get the smallest perfect square and then work your way through and make sure you've completely simplified what's left. Okay, in number three we have... The square root of 54, okay, so any perfect square is 54, okay, 9, this is going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 6, that's going to leave me with 3 square root of 6, okay. Now the reason I give you that is because now, what about the cubed root of 54? So now, I'm not looking for a perfect square, I'm not looking for, okay, 54, I could write as 3 squared times 6, right? Now. I don't want a perfect square, I want a perfect cube, okay? Is there a perfect cube that's a factor of 54? Yes, 27, okay? 27 times 2. The cubed root of 27 is 3. This is 3 cubed root 2, okay? If you thought about it, this is because 54, if I made a prime factor tree, 54, Okay, that's 2 times 27. 27 is 3 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So the fa prime factoring of 54 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. If you're taking the cubed root, you need the same factor 3 times. So this would be 3 to the third times 2. Okay, so if you prefer to do the prime factoring to figure this out, you can. Okay, but if you know your list of perfect cubes, then you could just find a factor that's a perfect cube of 54. Okay, that's a perfect cube that is a factor of 54. Okay, so notice you don't simplify them the same. Here you would want a factor squared, here you want a factor to the third power. Okay, so that was number, I think that was number four, so number five. What about the cubed root of negative 250. So are you allowed to take the cubed root of a negative number? Absolutely. This would be the same as the cubed root of negative 1 times the cubed root of 250. So what's going to happen with that negative is it just becomes negative cubed root of 250. So is there a perfect cube that goes into 250 evenly? Yes, 125. And 125 times 2 is 250. So remember there's a negative outside here, right? So the cubed root of 125 is 5, so this would be negative 5 cubed root 2. And then does 2 have any factors that are perfect cubes? No, so that's what we would simplify to be. Negative 5 times the cubed root of 2. So now, let's do number 6. Let's do the fourth root of 32. Now, I don't know my x to the fourth off the top of my head. So what I would do is, once I hit the fourth root, the fifth root, the sixth root, 
Just know, this simplifies, if you could write this as a factor of 32 to the fourth power times any other factors that are left over. So this is a good one for prime factoring. So this is going to be 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So 32 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, this is, if this is a fourth root, it's going to simplify if you could write the same factor four times. There it is. That's 2 to the fourth times one leftover factor of 2. So I can rewrite this as the fourth root of 2 to the fourth times 2, which means I can simplify this to be the fourth root of 2 to the fourth times the fourth root of 2. The fourth root of 2 to the fourth is just 2, fourth root of 2. Okay, so now... Let's continue. Okay. So we have our, our product property and our quotient property. We don't remember. We have the nth root of A over B. That's the same as the nth root of A over the nth root of B. Now, here are some rules about simplified expressions. Okay? In a completely simplified expression, you have two rules. Rule number one is no fractions as radicands. So that means you cannot leave a fraction inside of a radical. And number two, no fractions in the denominator of a... Oh, sorry, not no fractions. Ay, ay, ay. No radicals in the denominator of a fraction. So what we do here, it's called we have to rationalize our denominator. Okay. So how do we take care of making sure we don't leave any fractions inside radicals? We use our quotient property, but then we're going to have to talk about rationalizing our denominator. Okay, so we have to make sure we follow these two rules when we are simplifying our expressions that have radicals in them. Okay, make sure you have these two rules written down. If you need to pause the video, pause it and then play it once you write them down. Okay, so we're just doing more simplifying. Next one we'll simplify is Oops. 4 square root 10 times 6 square root 6. So this is just one term times another, okay? As long as they have the same index, you can multiply them together. So the same index. This is going to be 24 times the square root of 60. Okay, so now go through. This is 24, whoops, I already wrote it down. 24 squared of 60. So I need to check. Okay, I did the operation of multiplication, but I need to check. Can I simplify this square root any further? Well, are there any factors of 60 that are perfect squares? Okay, and the answer to that is yes. Okay, if I take 60 and I divide it by 4, okay, I'm going to get 15. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. The square root of 4, this is 2 square root 15, but what do you still have outside of this radical? You still have this 24, 24 times 2, that puts you at 48 square root 15, and then check. Can you simplify the square root of 15 any further? No, there's no perfect squares that are factors of 15, so this simplifies to be 48 square root 15. The only time you can multiply radicals together is if they have the same index. When you do, you multiply the outsides together and you multiply the insides together. Then make sure you always simplify your radical. Okay, the next one we're going to do is the square root of 1 fourth. So you cannot, okay, you cannot keep a fraction inside of a radical. The first thing you should always check for is can I simplify this radical inside this radicand any further? 1 fourth. No, I can't. So this is the square root of 1 over the square root of 4. Now, simplify the radicals if it's possible. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So notice, I no longer broke rule 1, and I don't break rule 2, because I have a rational denominator. I ended up with a perfect square here, so there's nothing to simplify. We just have one hat. But what if we have something like this, the square root of 2 thirds? Okay, so the first issue is, 
I can't have a fraction inside of a radical, so I break it up. The square root of 2 over the square root of 3. But now the issue is I don't want a radical sitting in the denominator, so I have to rationalize my denominator. So in order to rationalize my denominator, that means I need to no longer have, okay, I need to no longer have an irrational value. Now, remember, the way to make a fraction look different but not change its value is by multiplying by a clever form of 1. So we need to figure out what we need to multiply this by so we end up with something that is going to be rational. So if this is the square root of 3, okay, if I multiply it by itself, which is the square root of 3, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that would give me the square root of 3 squared, because 3 times 3 is 3 squared which is the square root of 9, right? And whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. The square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is going to give me the square root of 6. And now the purpose of doing this was because now what's the square root of 9, which is really the square root of 3 squared, is 3. And now this does not simplify because you don't really have the value of 6. You have the value of square root of 6. If you add a coefficient on the radical, you want to make sure that this over 3 can't be simplified any further, but it can't. Okay, so this simplifies to be the square root of 6 over 3. Just check, can the square root of 6 be simplified any further? No. Is there a coefficient out here? This over 3 can be simplified any further? No. So that's a completely simplified expression. Next one. the square root of 2 twelfths. So the first thing I would do is, if this fraction can be simplified, you need to simplify it. So this would become the square root of 1 sixth. Now, can you leave a radical, okay? Can you leave a radical with a fractional radicand? No. So we break it up. This is the square root of 1 over the square root of 6, okay? Simplify the radicals if you can. The square root of 1 is 1, but you can't simplify the square root of 6. Now the issue with this is, you can't have any radicals sitting in the denominator, so you have to rationalize your denominator. Rationalizing entails not changing the value of the fraction, but making it look different. The only way to do that is to multiply by a clever form of 1. So what could I multiply by so that I end up with a rational value here? Well, if this is just the square root of 6 to the first, if this was the square root of 6 to the second, then this would simplify to just be 6. So the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 gives me the square root of 6 squared. 1 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 6. This is going to be the square root of 6 over the square root of 6 squared is 6. And I can't simplify. There's nothing to simplify in the numerator with the radical. Okay, The radical is as simplified as it can get. And there's nothing outside of here that I can simplify with the 6. Okay, Next. Okay, so what you could do is you could simplify each of these separately, or if you put it back together, which you're allowed to do, if you could simplify that fraction down, I would simplify it down inside. So the square root of 8 over 10 is going to be the square root of 4 over 5. Notice I was able to take out a common factor of 2. Okay, so now I would break it back up. The square root of 4 over the square root of 5, simplify the radicals as much as possible. That's going to be 2 over the square root of 5. And now, okay, I don't want a radical sitting in the denominator. So if this is a square root of 5, I need this to get to the square root of 5 squared. Okay, so what times the square root of 5 gets me the square root of 5 squared? That's going to be the square root of 5. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of 5, that's 2 square root of 5. 5 times 5, that's the square root of 5 squared. And the square root of 5 squared, okay, that's going to become just 5 in the denominator. So this is going to be 2 square root 5 over 5. Now, can you simplify this radical up here any further? No. Now just check. 2 fifths. Can you simplify that? No. So we're done. Okay, we're going to do one more of this. Actually, two more of these. Okay, so if we have the... Let's do 1 over the cubed root of 3. Okay? The problem is I can't have a radical sitting in the denominator of a fraction, but this time it's a cubed root. 
So we're going to rationalize our denominator in order to end up with <clears throat> uh, no longer having an irrational value in the denominator. But let's think of this. If this is the cubed root, not the square root, in order for this to become rational, this needs to become the cubed root of 3, not to the second power, but to the third power, because the cubed root of 3 to the third is what becomes 3. So if this is the cubed root of 3 to the first, okay, what do we have to times it by so we end up with the cubed root of 3 to the third? And remember, you can only multiply by radicals when they have the same index. So the cubed root of what times the cubed root of 3 to the first, first leaves you with the cubed root of 3 to the third. That's going to be the cubed root of 3 to the second. So if you multiply the denominator by the cubed root of 3 squared, you have to multiply the numerator by the cubed root of 3 squared. And what is 3 squared? That's 9. So this is 1 times the cubed root of 9, which is just the cubed root of 9. So this is going to be the cubed root of 9 over the cubed root of 3 to the third would give us 3. And there's nothing to simplify. You can't do 9 over 3. 9 is inside of the radical. And you can't simplify the cubed root of 9 because the cubed root of 9 is just 3 times 3. You don't have any factors raised to the third power. And the last one. Let's say we have 2 over the cubed root of 4, okay? Could you just say, okay, I'm going to do this as the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 4 squared so that I end up with the cubed root of 4 to the third? Sure, that's perfectly fine to do. We could do that, okay? So we're going to do the cubed root of 4 squared, the cubed root of 4 squared, okay? 4 squared is 16, so this is 2 cubed root 16 over the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 4 gives you the cubed root of 4 to the third, which is 4. So notice, we have some things, okay? Can we simplify the cubed root of 16 any further? Yes, we can, because the cubed root of 16 can be simplified, because this would be the cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 2, which would be 2 cubed root 2. So that would become now 2 times 2 cubed root 2, that's going to become 4 cubed root 2 over 4, and now 4 over 4, this simplifies to be the cubed root of just 2. Now, could you have gotten there a little bit easier without all this simplifying? Yes, because if you have 2, if you have 2 over the cubed root of 4, okay, 4 is really 2 squared. So you actually only need to multiply and get to the cubed root of 2 to the third by multiplying by the cubed root of 2 to the first. Notice, that's just less factors. It means that you have extra factors. 4 squared is really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So you have additional factors, okay? So this would give us 2 cubed root of 2 to the first would be 2 over... This would be 2, and then the 2 over 2 cancel, and you're just left with the cubed root of 2. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, though. Okay, so that's it for simplifying radicals. In the next video, we'll do operations with radicals.